Okay, so the keys, and I, this looks a little bit different than your packet. Can I include a little bit more space? Because I need a little bit more space because of the big board and everything. So the first step in these proofs is to remember to mark whatever is given. Okay, if it's not already marked. So number one, we're given LD is parallel to ON. So that's this line, whoops, that's this line and this line. So we put a little triangle to say they're parallel. Please remember, as soon as you see one line is parallel to another, okay, we're talking about what we've been doing already this year. As soon as we see parallel lines, we think transversal, and then we think about our different rules. What rules do we use during this time to prove things congruent? Now that's what we're doing now. What were the rules we used back here to prove triangle congruent? Like this one and this one. Corresponding. So we had corresponding angles. What about this one and this one? Alternate interior angles, and we had alternate exterior angles and stuff like that. So what I want you to focus on is this one. Alternate interior angles. As soon as you see this, I want you to think alternate interior angles. Somewhere there's going to be an alternate interior angle you're going to mark. It's just a given. It's not a given, but it's a given. Okay? So what I want you to do is, whenever you see that, go ahead and extend the line so it's a little bit more familiar to you. And think about the transversal. Yes, there's two transversals, but we're looking at the triangles here. So what that means is, if you kind of tilt it and look at it, then this angle right here matches this angle right here. Those are alternate, alternate interior angles. So just like there's other things we always mark, we always mark vertical angles, we always mark a line that is itself by the reflective property. If you see two lines are parallel, you know you're going to be marking two angles congruent because of AIA. Okay? Now, let's get into it. So the first thing we do, as always, is we write down our LD is parallel to ON. And we're going to say LD is congruent to ON. And those are both given. And now I'm going to go over here. I'm also going to mark those two. So I know those two are both congruent. So I mark those two sides. I mark them parallel. Now I mark them congruent. Okay, now look what's happening already. I have an angle here and I have a side here. I have an angle here and I have a side here. So I'm kind of going for something like SAS or AAS or ASA. We know that, right? Now, looking at this, I'm going to write down the two angles that I marked. Anytime you mark something, you got to justify it. Remember, it's like talking to a toddler. Those angles are the same. Why? Okay, alternate to your angle. So we got to name them. Now, I have too much going on here. I can't see the letters. Okay. My two angles that are congruent, can I just say L is congruent to O? Do I need to use any more complicated letters? Can I just say L is O? Yes, because there's nothing else going on. There's not a bunch of angles going on. So I can just say angle L is congruent to angle O. And how do I know that? Alternate exterior interior angles are congruent. We know that. We already learned about that. Okay, so I have an angle on the side. What's the other thing on here I'm going to mark every single time I see it? Bow tie, what do I mark? What, what do I mark? What's special about it? 
No, no midpoint. There's nothing about midpoint. Vertical angle. Anytime I see this, I'm marking like so. Okay? Vertical angles. Now, can I say angle M is congruent to angle M? No, there's too much going on. There's too many angles there. So I need to label this correctly. All right? Now, on that note, I'm going to take a side trip here. Go. I have a monitor. It okay, let's do it again. If I have two triangles, if you want to write this down, you can. If you don't want to, whatever. But we're going to talk about this. All right. And I have like angle. I have an angle marked here. I have an angle marked here. I have an angle marked here. And I have an angle here, and then here, and then here. A lot of times we want to get in the habit of just saying, oh, A, B, C, D, E, F. It's not always that way. I want you, and I've referred to this before, but I haven't really completely come out and said it. So I refer to it in the notes a lot. Use the markings as kind of like roadmaps. Like you're driving down the highway, you see a road sign. And when you see it like this, you know, this has one mark and this has two marks. Okay? So if I said triangle A, B, C, Okay, and obviously we have ASA here going on. But I need to name the right order. Well, think about it this way in your head. If I say ABC, I'm starting where there's a one mark, I'm going to where there's two marks, and then there's no mark. So it's kind of like going, hey, I'm going to highway one, highway two, unnamed road. So I come over here, and when I say it's congruent, I need to go in the same order. So what is my highway one? D. And if I travel down Highway 1, and then E, like so, okay? Get in that habit of thinking of it that way. Same thing for if I have A, B, C, let's say I have, you know, okay, something like that. And if I said, let's just make it kind of interesting, mix it up a bit, and I said cap. Okay? So I'm starting at C, and I'm going to A. So I'm going down, I'm following Highway 3, then I go up Highway 1, and I come back Highway 2. So that means I need to follow the same route over there. So if I'm starting and going down Highway 3 to Highway 1, where am I going to start? Yeah, my, my horrible E over there. Triangle E, or triangle E is going to start there. So I'm going on 3 to 1. So what's my next stop? D and then F. So it's not always going to form a word or anything like that, but think of it that way. Think of it as roadmaps. Okay? Coming back to what we were talking about here. If I'm going to name this, okay, I can name this triangle over here a few different ways. I can name it DLM, DLM. It doesn't really matter. Okay? Oh, we didn't do the middle angle yet, did we? No, we're going to be careful with that. So, I need to name that angle with the vertical angle. So, if I said angle, I want to name this one right here. The only important thing is M must be in the middle. It doesn't matter whether I call it LMD or DML. <clears throat> doesn't matter. So, if I say LMD, it's going to be congruent. Think about this. I'm going highway 1, highway 2, no name. So where do I want to start on the other one? Yeah, O, then 2, M, then N. Very good. So angle O, M, N. Notice my M's are in the middle on both of them. That's important. Every time we mark vertical angles, that's all we have to say is vertical angles are congruent. Very weird. I like made more space earlier. I don't know why it shrunk that. I might be on the wrong page. Doesn't matter. So, do I have enough information now to name my triangles? Yeah, I have A, A, X. So, I can name my triangles. Here's the cool thing if you do this angle in the right order, now you can just say triangle and use the same order L, M, D is congruent to triangle 
O M N, like so. And my reason is A A F. If you label everything, it tells you right there. Now remember, this worksheet is all about CPCTC. So with CPCTC, we're always going to prove the triangles, and then we're going to go one step further. <coughs> Once we have a triangle proven, we can say any part is congruent. So LMMO, LMMO, line segment, line segment, and then we just say that's by CPCTC. That's it. All right, number two, let's see what we got. So we start off, it, we're given X and P are the same. So I go up here and I mark X and P. That's given to me. M is the midpoint of XP. Okay, this is another one of those immediate ones. Everybody put your finger or your pencil on M. On M. That is the midpoint of XP. So if we know M is the midpoint, what do we know about XP? What can we say about it? If this is the midpoint right here of this, what do we know about it? What does the midpoint do? What's congruent? Not X and P, X and P are angles. At 7 p.m. This piece and this piece must be the same. If your where your finger is at the midpoint, that means the left side and the right side are the same length. So as soon as you see midpoint, you know you're going to have to write out one extra step. So let's get into that. So we start off again. Angle X congruent to angle P. M is midpoint of XP. We just write that and we say given. Now, once we know that, even though we just marked XM and MP, we need to make that statement. You've got to make the statement. So we say XM is congruent to PM. And what's the reasoning for that? No. These are, I'm talking about two line segments. It can't be vertical angles or alternate exterior angles. I'm talking about line segments. I marked it because of the midpoint. So what do we say? Down to midpoint. Simple. Because it's at midpoint right here, I can say that these two pieces match because that's what the definition of a midpoint is. It cuts something, it bisects something into two equal parts. Okay? So think about it. When you're pulling for this stuff out of your brain on the test and reasoning, okay, think about what stuff means. If we're talking about line segments, you're not going to say stuff like AIA because that's angle. You know, that's alternate interior angles. Okay? <clears throat> you got to think about line segments versus angles. Right? We're talking about line segments here. So, what do we have so far? We have this angle that matches that angle. We have this side that matches this side. We've marked everything that we were given, but there's one more thing we can mark every time. What is it? The vertical angle. It should be kind of wrote by now. Anytime you see the bow tie, mark the vertical angles. Once you mark it, you must justify it. So what we're going to write down is order. So I'm going to say XML. So angle XML is congruent to what order do I want to do if I did XML? Highway 1, Highway 2, no name. PMO. So angle PMO. And the reason I can do that, vertical angles are congruent. Or if your definition of vertical angles, whatever. Vertical angles are congruent. 
which then gives me another A right here. Do I have enough information to prove my angles of my triangle congruent? Yes, I do. The beauty thing is, I can just take this same statement and just change the angle to triangle. XML to triangle PMO. And the rule is, the reason is, ASA. If you label them on the triangle, it just screams out at you what rule we're using. Once we prove a triangle congruent, now we can prove any part of it. So we can say XL and OP, <coughs> same. And that's by our favorite CP, CP, Z. Okay, next one I'm going to start you off and you're going to have some time to work. So, given SPT is C equal to TPO. Now, since we like to be in the right order, let's look at this drawing. STP comes down like this. PTO does that. It's kind of the same angle. The T's in the middle for both of them, but I don't like it because we want to be in the same order. So we really should call this OPT. So we're going in the same order, just for good training. I meant, I said OTP and I wrote OPT. OTP. Okay? So we know SPT and OTP are the same. So we mark that here and there. Those are the same. We also know that SP is equal to PO. So SP, PO. What else do we know? What can we mark every time? Middle line, TP. We know this one is congruent to itself by what property? Okay, so what do we have here? We have this side, we have this angle, and this side here. SPT. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I made a mistake here. I was writing these ones. SPT, this didn't make sense the way I had it marked. SPT is down here. This should have been OPT. I was right the first time. OPT. So it's this one. It wasn't making sense because we're going to get ASS, and that's a bad thing. So SP, we got this one here and this one here, and we're going to mark this one. That makes more sense because that gives me this. Okay? So you have everything you need to prove a triangle. And then it's just one step further to prove this. So right now, a couple minutes, do a proof. So we start by writing our given. So angle SPT is congruent to angle OPT. And segment SP is congruent to segment PO. All that was given to us. So we mark those two things. After that, we also mark TP. So we need to justify that. So we say TP is congruent to TP, or you can say PT is congruent to PT, doesn't matter. And that's a reflexive property. We now have a side, an angle on the side, in that order, so we're done. At least name the triangle. So we can now say, Triangle SPT is congruent to triangle DPT. It's using the same letters in order. I'm sorry, OPT, which is no, not D. OPT. As by what rule? Let's say yes. Good. Now that we've proven congruent triangles, any part we want. Like this, we're just going to move right down here and say angle S is congruent to angle O by CPCTC. Same rule every time. All right, so we are given that AT is congruent to MR, so we mark that. We're also told that AT is parallel to MR. 
So we're going to put little triangles here. And as soon as we have little triangles to the parallel, I'm going to extend some lines. That's not extending lines. Oh, that's what happened. Oh, that's weird. Oh, that's weird. You. That's weird. Technology. Okay, so once we mark this and we have a transversal, then we know we're going to have alternate interior angles marked right there. We can mark those. Okay, so <clears throat> we have a side and we have an angle, and there's something else you can find on there to mark. Okay, so I'll clean this up to get this out of the way. I don't need to tell you. Okay. So, we have an angle, we have a side, there's another side you can mark. So, we write down our given. Like so. Okay? Those are both given. Anytime we see a drawing like this, where one line is shared by both shapes, we immediately mark it. And as soon as we mark that, we say MT or TM is congruent to MT or TM. By what property? Reflexive property. At this point, we have an angle here. Okay. Oh, we, we're given that. We have a side here, a side here. We have an angle here, and a side here, and a side here. Can we two? Do we have enough information to prove the triangle congruent? By what rule? S A S. It's right there. It's just screen time. S A S. S A S. So we say triangle. AMT is congruent to triangle RTM by SAS. Once we have triangles proven congruent, we can take any statement about a part of those triangles and just write it right here. Angle AMT is congruent to angle RTM. And same rule every time. C T C T C. Corresponding parts of the congruent triangles are congruent. All right. Given C is the midpoint of BD, okay? As soon as we see that, right here, we know those are congruent, so we can mark them. We're going to have to justify in our proof, but we can do that. BCF, this angle right here, is congruent to DCF, that angle right there. So right now, we have a side and an angle, a side and an angle. There's one more piece of information on there that we are not given, but we can mark because we know it and justify it in the proof. Then we have our, enough for our triangle, and then we can prove this. Okay. So we know C is midpoint of BD. And we know angle BCF is congruent to angle DCF. <coughs> All right? And those are both given. So we mark them. There's only one more thing we need, and it should be screaming at us, this piece right there. Every time we see that, we mark it. And then if we mark it, we must justify it and say CF is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. And at that point, we now have SAS, if we mark it. And every time we mark something, we should write the letters with it. 
So we have all we need. So we can say triangle BCF is congruent to triangle DCF by SAS. And once we have the triangle proven, this just drops right down there and we prove this. EF equals DF. And that's by, again, CPCPC.